Hey booktube, this is Kelly. Thank you so much for watching my channel, Books I'm Not Reading. Um, I know I say that at the beginning of every video, but I truly, truly mean it. I'm so grateful for everyone who watches my videos. I really am curious about what you guys think on this particular topic, and that is what should we expect from our booktube channels? Or if we're thinking, if some of you are thinking about starting a booktube channel, what your expectations should be. Because I think most of us in the beginning are just like, oh, maybe I'll have like 15 subscribers and half of those will be my friends. Or, you know, maybe I can dream of like 50 subscribers. And over time, things change. Um, and for me, the biggest change has been what I look at um, in terms of success, which is, you know, even though I have 1800 subscribers, if you look at the views for my videos, we'll definitely see like I, they're, they're, they're not, they're not all watching. Um, and that's okay. I have just heard some comments lately in some videos and in comment sections and different places that lead me to believe like those people who are thinking about if 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 I were someone who was thinking about starting a booktube channel um that might it it might turn me away from that idea or it might give me unrealistic expectations of what is what is a successful <laughs> booktube channel um what what are we going to what are we going to get out of it what's what's in it for us kind of thing um I really, really understand the need for people to take a break from booktube. Life events, moving, finishing school, um, getting a new job, all kinds of things. But I do get it. I do understand why people make those decisions. Um, but I am concerned when people talk about their booktube channel in comparison to like that it's work. Um, and I, <laughs> it's really interesting to me when people ask me like, what are, what are my hobbies? Um, because I don't, obviously I don't tell people about my, um, people that I know personally about my booktube channel. Um, but it is a very time consuming hobby but it's always, I've always had the expectation that it is a hobby. The only thing I've ever purchased specifically for this channel, along with my husband, we've got a tripod and um, a way to attach our iPad to the tripod. And that is it. That is, that is all the investment that we have made. <laughs> uh, with the exception of a ton of time. And that's okay. Like, Again, I miss it. I miss it if I'm if I'm if I'm away uh, for too long, you know. So hence the reasons I was recently filming in one of my parents' closets. <laughs> but um, I I do worry about the people that I like, especially smaller booktubers who I feel like are really frustrated by like how quickly their channel is growing, how many comments they're getting. Um, you know, is anyone out there <laughs> sort of thing? There's an undercurrent there of like, I feel like of expecting that they're going to make money and this is going to, this is, this is going to be, this, this is going to be their job, right? Um, oh, wouldn't that be so wonderful? And I am not at all, I know there are people out there who are on fixed incomes. I know there are people who are, you know, maybe they recently had a, a big move in their life and they're trying to find ways to sort of supplement the income that they do have. And like, I, that is, I totally like, I wish, I wish them the very best. Um, and, and some of those channels are, are, are already very successful channels anyway. So, um, I think I, yeah, but I will say most of us aren't really going to make um, very much money off of booktube if any I myself so my channel is monetized this video will not be monetized ever um I wait a week before I turn monetization on on one of my videos 
So the goal there is to get you to hit the little bell <laughs> so that you will watch my video quickly. Like you'll watch it soon. Um, and uh, yeah, like you won't have to see ads, um, that sort of stuff. I don't know, again, I don't know how, how successful that is a strategy or not. I've been monetized for about like maybe like six months. Um, and I recently just <laughs> decided to glance at my ad revenue so far, which is about $16 and 53 cents. Um, and I don't get paid until I've made a hundred dollars. So I'm not expecting a check anytime soon. And that's totally fine. The real, the, the thing I would do if I wanted to make money is I would make way more book reviews. Um, because for instance, <laughs> Dr. My review of Dr. Zhivago has, is one of the most popular videos I have ever made on my channel. People continue to watch it. People continue to watch, uh, my review of Gone with the Wind. Like, I, I don't know why, because I feel like there should be other people out there who have made videos <laughs> about those books um, that should crop up higher. Uh, but for whatever reason, I don't know, people, people are still watching those videos. And, and that was one of them was last year and one of them was maybe two years ago, more than two years ago. So um, yeah, so that's, if I, if I, if I was looking at the long haul, like, that's really where I would spend a lot more time rather than these chatty, chatty videos. I have done some other things. Um, I, I don't want to say to generate revenue. Like I have a Kofi, like a, the, the coffee tea thing. I've never gotten any money from that. It's totally fine. Okay. Um, and I do have an Amazon wish list, but I have it set up in such a way that you really have to reach out to me and ask me for my mailing address because I, I just don't want that out in the world. Um, I don't want that out on social media. So, um, people usually send me a message on Instagram or Goodreads or leave me a comment in the comment section if they want to if they want to get something from my wish list. And I what I'm trying to do and I need to get caught up on this a little bit is that when people make book recommendations to me, I'm trying to add those to the um, to the wish list. So one of the books um, that I did get from one of you wonderful people is Braiding Sweetgrass. Um, which was um, a book that the Book Naturalist Club um, read together. I really wanted to read it then. <laughs> I didn't get to it. Um, I just heard so many good things about this book. I'm really excited to read it. And the person who purchased this book for me, um, we're going to read this together. So I'm really, that's really cool. I'm so excited about that. So um, and, and I really appreciate their generosity because frankly, like I, I feel like I'm kind of in a place where I'm not going to acquire any more books for, for quite a while. Um, because the library is <laughs> exploding. Um, I don't have a Patreon. I, I, you know, I would love to have some kind of like VIP, um, <laughs> A book club or something like that and it's awesome it's awesome that people can do that that would put so much pressure on me I would be so stressed about that that whatever money I might make from it would not it would not be worth it now again if I didn't have to work full-time if I could just be at home and read and and do all the other household chores that I actually should be doing right now. If, if that is successful for someone, I'm really happy for them, but I don't think that that, like, by no means should we think that's the norm. Um, by no means should we think that, um, yeah, like the time that we invest in our channel is, is going to somehow be profitable. Um, uh, one of the things is that sometimes we spend a lot of time on a video. Like it's a huge amount of time. It's a big commitment. Like it's something out of the ordinary. It's something 
something we normally don't do. And then people can get disappointed about how many people actually watch that video. And I personally feel like that's the wrong attitude to have. First of all, like every, every video you make, like you should feel it. Like, like if I, if I, I mean, I have made or started to make many videos that I, yeah, I finally turned the camera off, shut down the iPad and walked away because I just, I just didn't have the right energy. I just didn't have the, I, I, the vibe that I want to have on this channel, like was not coming across. And so I just did, ended up not making <laughs> a, a video that particular day. Um, but some videos are extremely time consuming and that does not mean by any, <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination that they are going to be successful, that they, that you're going to have tons of views. Um, especially if it's something really different on your channel that you haven't, that you haven't done before. So the best example I can use on my channel is my fake crates. Okay. So if you're not familiar with my fake crates and I have a whole playlist of them, um, I, I love the, I, I, I when I started booktube, I've seen less of this lately, but there were all these like unboxing videos. Um, and I loved the idea, right? Like it would come with a book and like some, like a, maybe a bookmark or a candle or a towel or, you know, for beach reading or something, something like that. Right. Um, and yeah, or, or book of the month or whatever, like there's all kinds of things like, you know, people take out of the box, uh, and film it. Um, and I really liked that idea, but I did not want to pay for it. And I wanted, I wanted to do something where it would have like kind of this sort of whimsical feel. Like it's not something I could ever possibly ship out in mass quantities to people. Um, you know, like, you know, there'll be a pot of tea, um, and in the fake crate with piping hot tea inside of it. All those videos are videos that make my heart sing. I love, I love making those videos. And do you know what? Like people just don't really like watching them. And that is okay because I did not necessarily make that video because I thought I was going to get thousands and thousands of views. I made it because it was fun because it brought me it brought me joy. Um and I and I and in general that's what I try to do with my videos. Like I want it to be something that I want to talk about that I want to share with you and hear what you think. We we choose how much time we're going to invest in our channels. And so that's something to really think about. Like my channel is got to be one of the most low tech channels out there. <laughs> and the people who watch my channel don't really seem to care. And, and so I haven't been too concerned about it. I am not going to go and buy a computer, um, you know, just so I can have like an intro or I can have some kind of splashy graphics or whatever on, on my, uh, on my videos. Like that's just not, that's just not me. It's just not my channel. And again, like certainly like if something suddenly happened and, you know, thousands of people were watching and sending money to my coffee account or whatever, like maybe I would think about that. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not right now. Um, yeah. So I think sometimes what's frustrating is our most creative videos, our most original videos that we make that are really unique to our channel, like don't get very many views. And it's a, and again, like, yeah, like, <laughs> am I sad that everyone doesn't love fake create videos? Well, maybe a little, but again, I really am making those videos for myself. What do I get out of having a booktube channel? What are my expectations? My expectations have definitely changed. It's my 
five year anniversary is coming up. We're going to celebrate big. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, my expectations have really changed. I have such incredible friendships with so many people and they may just be friendships in the comment section and that's okay. That's totally fine. <laughs> um, I have friendships with people from Instagram. I have, and I have friendships with people, um, who eventually we, we read books together. Um, I never thought that I would worry about somebody's health in Australia or that I would think about somebody who's, you know, changing jobs in Hong Kong, <laughs> what that's like. I never really expected to, um, think about like what's happening to, um, one of my favorite British booktubers when there's a long absence, uh, on, on their channel. I, um, I never thought I would worry about fire season in Oregon, but I do, <laughs> I do because there are people in all those places that I really care about. I really care about, um, I care about, I care about someone looking for a house in, in Germany and I care about, um, the health of people's pets and <laughs> their own health. Like, again, like it's just, um, but I, I feel like I have genuine friendships, um, on booktube and, and that's frankly why I can't, I can't stay away I, and I wish I could do more. As far as what I've received, I mean, I, I, I will be honest, like, yes, people have sent me books, which is so incredibly kind. And I try to reciprocate that as much as possible. If, if I had to give all those books away and just keep my friendships with those people, I, I would totally, like, my friendships are, you know, it's part of, that's part of how I, how I survive. That's part of, like, people on booktube don't realize it, but they help me build up my, my own personal resilience. So, anyway, booktube. Okay, I'd love to hear what you think in the comment section down below. Um, if you want, you can leave an emoji. Um, if you want, you can just say hello by giving this video a thumbs up. I do appreciate that. Um, but I really am curious as to what you think our expectations should be for booktube channels. So I look forward to hearing from you. Booktube, remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.